welcome to Wesley Place Methodist Church in All Sager on this sixth Sunday of the Easter period following the death and resurrection of Jesus. As with much of the weeks following Easter, we look back to the preparations and advice that Jesus put into place for his followers to help them to stay focused once he was no longer going to be there to guide them directly. Let us come before God in prayer. Mother, Father God, as we gather together to offer you our worship, we ask that you make your presence known to us by your Spirit. Help us to feel the connection which is always there but not always appreciated. Help us to understand that even in our darkest moments, you promise to never leave us. Amen. And for our call to worship today, we are going to sing, All Heaven Declares the Glory of the Risen Lord. Father, we come before you today full of grateful thanks for the wonders of your creation, for your joy, for the hope you give, and for all the many gifts of our lives. 
We know that we sometimes take these for granted, that we expect more. Forgive us for our dissatisfaction. Remind us of the all-encompassing joy of your love. Help us to reflect that love in all our actions and to all that we meet, so that we and those around us can draw nearer to you. Amen. Today's reading is taken from John, chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Amen. Hello, 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 and welcome to this morning service to all the young people that are tuning in with us. Uh, whether you're tuning in with us on a Sunday morning or some other period of the week, you are very welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Leslie, for doing the reading for us and giving up your time to do that. And for all the young people that have wanted to find activities, hopefully you've seen um, some sent through Rob's newsletter or you've had from myself, or you may have seen on our Facebook pages. We, um, over the last few weeks, had a look at some of the people that Jesus met after his resurrection. And then last week, we had a look at Jesus saying, I am the true vine. And we're going to move on a bit in that passage. And Jesus talks about how we should lay down our lives um, that is what true love is. But we're also having a think about communication. And I know Jane is going to speak a little bit about that very soon. So we're going to have a craft activity and a challenge to do with communication uh, today. So how, why don't you have a go at doing this? So what you'll need for this craft is two paper cups some colouring pens, some string, sellotape, and finally a pair of scissors.
a go at trying to do this um, talking exercise and listening exercise with the cups here. So you make sure you pull it tight and Deborah is going to speak to me and I'm going to see if I can hear her. Okay, you're... I'm us and you're God. Okay, excellent. Okay. Alright. Can you hear me? Can you hear me when I say a prayer? Go on then. Uh, Lord Jesus, I'm a bit worried about my day at work tomorrow and I pray that you help me with it. Amen. Amen. What did I say? I said, uh, dear Lord, I'm having a hard day at work. Will you help me? Amen. Yeah, that is what I said. But Excellent. I right. Should, yeah, right. Shall I try now? Yeah. Should, shall I be uh, us and you, God? Yeah, you can, you can do or it. Or can I answer your prayer? Yeah, I'll answer it. I'll answer it. Okay. okay. I hear your prayer, my child, and uh, I will try and help you. Amen. Amen. That'd be handy if you actually said that. Yeah. So we're going to try a few different locations. Uh, why don't you try a few different locations at home and send in those videos? So I'm here at the top of the stairs now with my cup. And Deborah is at the bottom, if you can see her there. All right, should we have a go? Yeah. So I'll listen first, see if we can say, hold it tight. Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you? Yeah. Let's see if I ask you a question. Let's see if you can answer. Right. Okay. What is 10 plus 10 plus 10? Oh, ask me again. What is 10 plus 10 plus 10? 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30. I think that works. What's your answer? Yeah, perfect. Good job. Right, okay. we'll go to one, one last place right, now. so okay? we're in the dining room. Uh, we're going to see Deborah's gone off somewhere. Let's see, see where she is gone. And uh, let's see if it works, uh, wherever she is. I don't think I can properly hear her. No? Okay, let's see if it works if I try. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? So obviously this one didn't work. Why don't you see how far you and your friends can go? Well, I hope you've enjoyed um, doing the craft activity uh, with the two cups and uh, having a go at seeing if you can uh, do a really long one as far as you can get it, speaking to um, one of your family members or a friend or whoever and see whether it actually works as uh, mine and Deb's did work, apart from the one that went through the window, of course. So why don't you have a go at doing that um, and having a think about the way that we communicate to God? And that is through prayer. It's not just about talking, but it's also about listening as well. So I hope you've enjoyed doing that. And we're now going to hand over to have another hymn, which is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord.
isn't it so hard to just be still sometimes? So often we overcomplicate things by thinking we need to be busy, busy, busy. Today's reading focuses on Jesus being the true vine and follows on from him explaining to his followers about God being the gardener and that to remain healthy they need to rid themselves of the dross that drags them down and gets in the way of them flourishing and producing good spiritual results. A bit like if you don't get rid of some of the rubbish on your computer, it gets very sluggish and you have too many connections open on the internet, then the signal gets weak. So really, Jesus is saying if you stay focused, then you'll keep a good connection and get all your work done that he has given you to do. So basically, anything that affects your connection to God is withered and dead and needs removing. Or you will become like that and the same thing will happen to you. Sadly, I believe that many have linked this passage with the demise of Judas, but I have to disagree. Matthew's Gospel tells us that once Judas realised what the Jewish leader's intentions towards Jesus were, he immediately showed regret and remorse and tried to return the money he was paid for betraying his friend. The despair he felt led him to take his own life. What we do know is that Jesus was able to forgive those who plotted against him and never showed remorse. I truly believe that Jesus feels the pain and anguish of all who suffer psychologically and that he welcomes those who are driven to take their own lives for whatever reason with open arms. And let's not forget that the other disciples lost it completely after Jesus was crucified and even though they supposedly got it about who Jesus was unlike Judas, they hid away until he came to meet with them. So I want to share some reflections about today's readings. Firstly, stay connected. Jesus is saying that just as in the Garden of Eden, all our heavenly creator wants is to return to having a relationship with humankind. Jesus already promised this when he told us he was the way, the truth, and the life, assuring us then that we would be connected to the Father, Mother, gender fluid God through him. He also later promised that after he ascended to heaven, he would send a counsellor, the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit would come during the Jewish festival of Pentecost and she would complete the connection between us, restoring our relationship with the three persons of the Trinity. A relationship, not a religious organisation full of rules and regulations. A big part of being in a relationship means that we care about and are interested in what is going on in a person's life. Just because God knows all that's going on in our lives, he, she, still wants to share those moments with us as part of a relationship. And we usually do this through the conversation of prayer and meditation. No set pattern or time. Think about our own personal relationships. We have all probably listened 
to a child, either our own, a family members or a friends, telling us for the umpteenth time about something they're excited about or worried about. Do we stop them and say, oh, you don't have to tell us that, we already know? No, of course we don't. Because this is part of being in a relationship and allowing the individual to grow and feel loved. Jesus says that if we stay connected, we will feel his joy and that this joy will make us whole. My second point I want to reflect on is to be prepared to think of others. Jesus commands us to love one another, i.e. put others' needs before our own. Jesus defines this as laying down one's life for one's friends. Now he's not necessarily advocating that you have to be prepared to die for someone, although some heroes will do this and make that choice. And Jesus himself obviously made the ultimate sacrifice for our sakes. Sadly, however, in the past, this statement has been misinterpreted and many wars have been justified and sending usually men, young men, off to fight. But if we think about sacrificing of our own desires for the good of someone else, then often that in itself has its own reward. Sacrifices can take many forms. Time, money, energy, and it doesn't really need to be advertised. We, mo we know that many have suffered over this last year. Many have sacrificed seeing friends and loved ones to protect the vulnerable. But this lack of contact with the very people we are trying to protect has severely tested some in other ways. For those living in high-rise flats or situations of abuse, the picture can be very different. Others have lost or reduced their source of income, leaving many unable to feed their families. Food banks, however, have been able to step in and in many cases, due to the generosity of those able to donate essential items and sometimes treats too. Here in Sandbach, the food bank is based in the Wesley Centre at Unity Church. So how can we help those who struggle mentally? Do we even know who they are? We can start by not trying to fix people. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Listening to someone is more beneficial than interrupting them and trying to give solutions. Not judging when somebody says something you find hard to accept. Perhaps they feel like harming themselves. Listen. Give it cred credence. Just like when supporting someone who's been bereaved, Christian platitudes may do more harm than good. Better to say nothing and get a comfortable silence. There is a story most of us have probably heard about the little boy who sees his next door neighbour crying in the garden. The little boy goes over to him and sits on his knee. And when he returns home, his mother says to him, what did you say to him? And the little boy says, I didn't say anything. I just helped him to cry.
So what can we take away about our social, spiritual and fellowship needs during the pandemic? We've had to think about new ways of staying connected. I think you've probably heard this at every service that we've had, with many people gratefully embracing technology for the first time and finding innovative ways to share conversations. I find we've talked to more strangers in the street than ever before. When we're out on our daily walks, we see people, we maybe say the same people, and people just seem to be more in need of conversation and smiles. We've seen kind relatives cycle to visit family and sit outside in the garden while the, the vulnerable person sits inside at the window. People have thought of different ways to be able to offer support at this time. And obviously we can still pray for ourselves and for others. Again, we've talked about this before, Zoom and YouTube have opened up our worship with people all over the country and the world. As many have touched on, we must try not to return to the old ways, but to make a blend of the old and the new when we meet up again. And more especially, those we have reached out to the church who wouldn't normally come into church for support during this time. They may still not want to come through the doors, but they may still want to be part of that fellowship. We mustn't lose that. We can't always do anything specific, but we can come alongside people in their need. Perhaps ditch the dross in our lives and bear fruit. I'm going to share with you now a prayer from the Methodist Handbook by Lynn Janot, a local preacher from Bromsgrove and Redditch Circuit. Let us pray. Come and sit beside me while I pray, Lord. I need to feel as though you are close enough to hear. Lately you've seen distant and far away from the bustle of my busy life. But now I pause. And at last I realise that you have been there all the while. Throughout all my distractions you have been with me, patiently waiting for my focus to return to you. You invite me to come and sit beside you, not because I'm worthy, but because I am in need. Now I am still and in the peace that enfolds me, I know that you are God. Amen. continuing to tackle this pandemic in areas where incidences are falling and where they are rising, such as India and the Seychelles. Be with those who are grieving, who are worried, who are fatigued and bearing the weight of the world on their shoulders. Take that weight from them and walk alongside them in their struggles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, Fill the leaders of the world with your wisdom, compassion and love. Stand on their shoulders as they make decisions and guide their hands in their actions. We particularly place before you the peoples of Eritrea, North Korea and Ethiopia and all those who are displaced by war, discrimination and poverty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, we ask you to lend that strength to your church, for new churches being created around the world, for churches that have to meet in secret, and for churches that seek to continue and grow. May all work only for your glory, and may they shine the light of your sun on all they touch. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. God of compassion, in a moment of silence, we bring before you all who we know who seek the warmth of your love and the strength of your hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we bring before you these our prayers today, knowing that we often fall short. Teach us to grow in you. We ask this and all our prayers today, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. for joining us in worship this morning. Next Sunday, we're going to try something different. We're going to have our first morning Zoom worship together, followed by coffee and fellowship. Please join us at 10.30 in the morning next Sunday. You will find an invitation to the service in Rob's message, along with the Zoom link. So please join us and enjoy worship and fellowship together next Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us at Wesley Place for worship today and fellowship. And for a closing prayer. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the rain fall softly upon your fields. May God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Amen. And we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>